Hi, my name is Dan, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to affect a simple in-game pause menu using the widget blueprints. Okay, so my setup this time is a third-person template, which is pretty normal for me, and uh, I've got uh, a Dan controller, so this is um, derived from the player controller class, and in the game settings, I've just overridden that in the sorry, the project settings in maps and modes. I've got it so that it's using my controller and controller instead of the default controller. And also in the inputs here, I've created an action mapping for the escape key um, called pause menu. Okay, now quickly. While I'm talking about the escape key, I'm going to mention the fact that in some versions of Unreal, I don't know if it's actually in all versions, if it's still in new versions, because I've disabled it, and I don't know if that setting has carried on to a new version. Uh, but it may be that in the version of Unreal you are using, that if when you play, and you're playing in the editor here, you press escape, and that quits out. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you how to disable that if you want to. So you go to Edit, uh, Editor Preferences, and you're going to want um, Keyboard Shortcuts, and type in Stop. Here. The one that you want is the uh, Play World Stop, and you can see mine's mapped to F12. And if you've got it mapped to Escape and you want to not use that, then uh, you can set that to something else in there. Okay, we're just going to come out of that. The other thing that I've got in this setup is I've uh, created a very simple menu, uh, Blueprints widget, which has just got zoom in, two buttons in it, a resume button and a quit button. Uh, they're just kind of standard buttons. They don't look particularly pretty. Uh, there's no advanced functionality here. I've not got anything about uh, changing graphic settings or anything. I'm just going to be able to actually go back Bring up the menu, go back to the game, or quit the game at this point. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is uh, make sure that that menu exists in your game. And the best place to deal with this functionality is inside your uh, controller class, which is why I created a, a new controller class so that this can be done. And in here, I'm going to create a variable which is going to hold a reference to that main menu, uh, or the pause menu. So I'm going to call it pause menu and change its type to widgets. And the one we want is this one here, and it needs to be an object reference. Okay. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create that menu at the point where play begins. Now, you could do it at the point where you ask for the menu to be to be shown, but the problem with that is that uh, if you create a new one every time you're asking the menu to be shown, there is no node for destroying a widget, and so you're introducing what's called a memory leak if you do that. So you every time you um, press the escape key to show a menu, you create a new one, and you create a new one over and over again. And the old ones aren't getting deleted. So a more efficient memory management way to do it is to just have one and then to uh, either hide it or show it as you need it. So um, from event begin play, what we're going to do is we're going to create widgets. Uh, I'm going to select the widget, which is my BP menu widget. Okay. And then we're going to, um, the thing you need to do is to add it to the viewport so that it's going to be, sh uh, it can be shown. Uh, uh, to viewport. And you might be able to approach this by uh, adding this to the viewport at the point when you want it and then removing it, but it's easier just to use the visibility uh, um, property on there. So we're going to add it to the viewport, and then we're going to change the visibility. So um, set this set visibility, and we're going to set it to hidden. So by the time that our screen appears, this thing will already be hidden. Uh, but it'll be there, kind of lurking in the background, ready to be shown. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to actually 
assign that to this variable so that we have access to it later on. Uh, so we're just going to drag off the same widget there and stick it in there. So at that point, we should have the, uh, the widget sitting there ready to be used. Uh, the next thing we want to do is to, <laughs> is to create the functionality to actually show it. So um, I called it uh, pause menu. There we go. Action events. And when that's pressed, uh, I want to do various things, um, but I'll just start by changing the visibility, and then we'll have a look at uh, the issues that we've got, things that we want to fix. So we'll drag out a reference to that variable which holds the widget. I'm going to set visibility. <coughs> Excuse me. It's visible. Right. Let's test this and see what happens. Um, so uh, I'm going to click play. Uh, we're playing, we're playing, we're playing. I'm going to hit the escape key. And the menus appeared. Right, there are several things that are not ideal. Firstly, I haven't got a mouse pointer, so I can't interact with uh, the menu. It's just appeared, but there's no interactivity. Secondly, um, you can see the controls are still working, and I'm still able to run around the world. That's probably not what we want. Uh, another thing that's less obvious is that the physics simulation is still going as well, so it's good to pause the physics simulation. Um, so we need to do something about the mouse pointer. We need to do something so we get control to the menu. We need to stop the world working. Uh, so take control away from there. Uh, there are various things here. So uh, let's quit out there. So we can do all that in the same place inside the down controller. We set the visibility. Um, we're going to... Uh, so uh, you can set the input mode to be either the game input or the UI input. UI stands for user interface. Sets uh, input. Um, and so we've got three modes here. We've got game and UI, game only or UI only. And we're going to use UI only. Um, it wants a reference to the player controller, which is its, which we are the player controller here. This is what we've got. So we're going to use self. And the widget that we want to focus on is that one there. Okay. Ignore this. That's what we're doing. Um, so that is going to give control to the menu rather than to the game itself. And so it disables uh, the controller, which is actually this thing that we've got our, uh, we're doing the script in. Uh, we're also going to do um, show the mouse pointer. So show set show mouse cursor. So mouse show mouse cursor is a property of the controller. So we have direct access to it through the script because it's a script in the controller. So I'm going to show the mouse cursor there. We're also going to um, stop the physics running if the physics is running. Um, and the way to do this is to use it, the global time dilation mode. Set global time dilation, which can be set in all sorts of ways, but I'm going to set it to zero. Oh, sorry, got zero in, which means stop doing all the physics simulation. Now, you might have other things as well that are going on uh, for which you want to stop, but that's, you know, dependent on your game and, and what's going on. Uh, now, that should be everything we need. I'm not quite sure, but let's go and check. Um, so I press play, I press escape, and the menu comes up. We've got a mouse pointer. Control's been disabled. I can't move anything. The physics will have been disabled. and uh, We've just got no functionality yet. So if I click on resume or quit, nothing happens. Okay. So we're going to go back. Uh, well, not back. We're going to now go to the menu uh, widget here, and we're going to do the functionality for the resume button, which is going to we're going to do the reverse of everything that we did to show the menu. Uh, so, uh, what we want is the to scroll down here to the on click. This is for the button rather than the text, and it creates a uh, event handler function 
Yeah, well, uh, it won't actually. Um, so what do we want to do? We uh, want to set the time dilation back. Uh, so global time dilation, we'll set that back to one. And what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, the same things basically in reverse order. So we now want to, uh, what did we do? We have the uh, uh, mouse cursor. So let's hide the mouse cursor. Um, so that was a property called show, show mouse cursor. And it was actually a property of the player controller. So uh, we need to get player controller to get access to that. Get player controller. And that's going to be false. And then we um, want to uh, change the input mode to game only so that the UI no longer has control. And we need a reference to the player controller again there. So we'll just drop that in there. And finally, we're going to uh, hide the widget. So, um, set visibility. We're inside our visibility here, so we can just uh, so inside the the widget, so we can just set it here using him. So I'm just going to test that and see if it works. Uh, so we play. Um, Escape and resume takes us back to where we were. So that's brilliant. So you'll notice that um, I very deliberately went through those steps in reverse order. Uh, it probably wasn't necessary to do so in reverse order, but this is a, a fairly uh, common programming practice. If you go through a set of steps and you want to undo them, uh, it may be worth going through them in reverse order so that uh, your dependencies, if there was any dependencies going on, um, still stay clean and uh, whatever. So that's functionality for one of the buttons. And the other button is pretty straightforward, to be honest. Uh, so if we go into the designer and we've got the quit button, uh, we'll just scroll down to get the unclicked the event handler. And this is going to quit the game. And there is a node, quit game. Just sit, leave the default settings as it is. So we've got game, we're playing, press the escape, we get the menu. Uh, resume takes us back in, escape, and takes us out. Uh, which is fine, it's perfect. Right, there's one more thing that I want to show you whilst I'm here, which is uh, sometimes you'll see pause menus have a kind of blurring effect on the game itself. And uh, this is pretty easy to achieve in Unreal, so I wanted to show you how this happens. And it's a element inside the widget, and we can just add it into the widget. Uh, blur, so it's a background blur element. I just drag that into the uh, seen there or into the into the widget. Now we don't just want to blur this little bit here. We want to make it so that it blurs the whole screen. Uh, we want to make that uh, screen independent as well, so so resolution independent. So the way we're going to achieve this is uh, in the anchors. We're going to switch the anchors so that it goes to the full screen, and then in the offsets, we're going to do zero for all these offsets, which then sets the the corner boundaries to make to make a full screen, which is pretty straightforward. We've got a various options here, but uh, blur strength is the interesting one. Um, so we can add some blur there. Now you'll see what's happened is that it's actually blurring the menu buttons as well, and we don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the menu buttons are on top of that blur element. And the way that we do that is by using the Z order. So the Z order means how far front and back things are. It's an ordering of what might appear in front of all things. At the moment, everything is Z order zero. Our blur is Z order zero. So in order to get access to our buttons, just highlight a button and change the Z order to one, bring it forwards, 
can see it appears or it starts being blurred. Same for the other button. Um, and there we go. Let's just test that out. So into the game, just showing in the editor there. Uh, escape. And it's blurred. It's not a huge blur, but it's got a nice little effect there. It gives us the feeling that control has been taken away from the game and is now with a menu. I'm just going to show if you can resume. Obviously, it, it disappears because it's part of the widget. And when the widget disappears, it just disappears. So it's really, really easy to do that blur effect. So that's uh, a quick overall look at how to do an in-game menu. I'm going to do another video which is going to show you how to do a start game menu as well. Anyway, that's it from me for now.